What's up everybody, Sam Smice here. Today I want to show you how to make the bass too toxic by Chris Lake in Raggy Band. And if you do want to grab the preset to this sound, you can find it in my Serum Tech House Collection Volume 5 and also in my Patreon. And just as a reminder, before we get started today, please go ahead and give this video a like and also please subscribe to my channel if you are not yet subscribed. <laughs> That is the bass I'm gonna show you how to make today. So this is the MIDI right here. And then I'm going to put on my automation and you can see I'm doing some automation with the filter. So let's turn on the automation here. That's how you get that impact sound. Like that. So all I'm doing is automating the cutoff on the filter. But then I do have the kickstart on which gives you that pumping effect. I'll take it off, I'll show you what it sounds like without that kickstart. And let me show you how I made this in Serum. And interesting about this preset, I made this in a short video a few months ago and Chris Lake actually liked it. He reached out to me and asked for this preset because he said how he actually made it was really complicated, but he liked what I did here. So this, if you do want to grab it, you can find it in my latest uh, Tech House collection, my Serum preset collection. It's the volume five one, you can find it in there. So in here relatively, let's go through this. I only have one oscillator and then a sub. So let's just do this, turn off some of these things so we can walk through it one by one. The voicing is on mono. I just do that for any kind of bass sound. Let's go ahead and turn off all of these and these. So usually I start off by turning my voicing on to mono, going into this envelope. Now this sound, this bass had a bit of release to it. So you, you could hear like if you just hit a note, you get a bit of release. I just have the sub on right there. So I did add on, on the sub with the octave at negative two. And let's just turn this off for a second, but this is what I use for the main tone. And you just adjust this I can ask kick. I really like this uh, wavetable using it for getting almost like a distorted saw wave sound. So I can ask kick, it's going to be in that digital section, randomness at zero, level at 75, and then the sub, I added this on to give it a bit more low end. So let's see if we can see a difference on this span here. So you can see I'm just adding a bit more of that sub in the span. And I just did that um, because I felt like I, this oscillator A just needed, I did need a bit more um, sub. So that's why I'm adding in this sine wave sub. And I adjusted this phase here as well because I believe the randomness is at zero for the sub. So after that, I have my envelope one. I added on this envelope two. And this is one what, what I'm going to use to control the filter. So all you do is you just uh, adjust your envelope to like this and then click here, drag it to your cutoff. And then sometimes it'll be looking like this. So you just hit shift and option and then it will go uh, put the modulation unipolar, which means it's only going one way instead of both ways, which is bipolar. In the range here, it's about 27 hertz to 616, I think that's what that means. And then the amount is 39% and this resonance is, is at 15. I gave it some of that fat here and some drive, and then it is on for the sub and oscillator A. So then in the effects I add on EQ and I'm doing like a cut and then a boost. Now there was this technique called like the Poltec EQ trick. And I actually made a post about it a long time ago on Instagram. And let's see, it says the Poltec signature effect, effect is the ability to seemingly boost and cut the same frequency simultaneously in reality. The filters actually alter adjacent frequencies, but the natural interactive resonant dip has an amazing boosting and tightening effect, especially on bass guitar and kick drums. So you set the low frequency boost and the attenuate knobs to the same setting, and it kind of will like do this weird thing where it boosts and then does a cut. So you can see the frequency response here. So I was kind of doing something similar, similar work, but I was cutting before the boost to create some kind of effect like that. So, I mean, I would recommend trying this on bass where you do like a boost and cut right 
next to each other and see if that helps you achieve like the tightness of the base or whatever like mid range or sometimes if you do like a cut in the low end then you can get some better like feeling of the base popping through so i just did something like that to to i don't know for some reason i felt like that helped get this sound a bit closer to the original and then i did this thing where i added on this overdrive just adding on this post filter so i wanted to add a bit of Distortion around 200 hertz or so. And then after that, I felt like the bass had some width to it. So now in Serum 2, what you can do is I went to the filter since I'm sending both of these oscillators to the filter. I went into the filter and I sent some of the filter to the bus one. So I'll go into the bus one and in the effects bus one what i did is i added on the hyper mix at 100 because it's on a bus and the size is at about seven percent to give it a bit of width but i didn't want to add the width to the low end so then i could low cut it and i did this low cut at about 140 hertz And then this bus is being sent into, let's go into the mix, the main. So the bus goes into the main after that. So then it just gets sent back into the main here. And we get a bit of that width effect. I don't know what he used to add that width, but um, I just figured that I could use that hyper dimension to add some of it. Almost, it has like almost like a chorus effect or you could use maybe the ozone imager plugin also some people use and then after that to automate this cutoff this is the knob that i automated here you just go into your serum hit this configure and then you just tap on the cutoff and then that, that allows you to automate it so let's go ahead and show this automation that's all you do just just add in this automation here you get that effect like that so Pretty cool sound, and that is really it for the bass.